Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your five minute devotional. Hey, last week we were working our way through a discussion of Christ late raising Lazarus. Now we know Lazarus was dead and he was in the tomb for four days and the family was were beside themselves because all hope had been lost and Christ rose him from the dead. Now we demonstrate that that is this massive blessing in in the life of Lazarus and his family and also was an example to all the people that were watching on to see if this was the son of God or not. But it also came with a struggle because immediately after this, the chief priests and the Pharisees come against Christ because people were beginning to believe. That's the case in your life and that's the case in my life that blessings and struggles oftentimes come together and it's hard to see one from the other. This story brought up one other interesting thought in my mind, which is we haven't really discussed the life and death stuff that's happening in this story. Exactly what happens upon death. And there's three passages I want to share with you in regards to that. The first one comes out of Romans. Romans chapter 6, uh, starting at verse 23. I'll put it on the screen there and you can follow along. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Two things to focus on here. One is the wages of sin is death. That word wages is important. We have earned it. I have earned it. I don't have to beg my employer to get paid because I've done the work necessary to get paid. Well, the payment for our sin is death, but there is a free gift coming through Christ Jesus, of course, and we have to accept that gift, but we don't have to earn that gift. That's what a gift is is there is no payment to be made. Now, the second verse I want to share comes out of John, and it does tie into this. If you hold with me, John chapter 4, starting at verse 23, we'll read all the way through 24. It says this, but an hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Again, two things to focus on, spirit and truth. One, the truth side of it, we do have to seek out the words of God and make sure we're following them, not the words of man or what makes us happy at the time being because my emotions run away with me. So I have to always be tied back to the word of God. And the second one is in spirit. And we've mentioned this a couple times, but I'll say it one more time. The world doesn't have to understand what your walk with God looks like. You do. It's the spirit that you are walking in. So your actions may look different than mine, and we can both be led by the spirit. They don't have to line up. We're not comparing apples to apples. If you have that struggle in your life where people around you are saying you should live a certain way, and you feel that the spirit is leading you another way, and you can back it up with scripture, of course, because it's tied in with truth, then I encourage you to go ahead and walk in the spirit. And in the comments below. I would love to hear what your struggle is so I can pray with you and be a part of it. The third passage I want to bring up is all about redemption because that is really the struggle the family was having with Lazarus is where was he when the physical shell wears out where did the person go was he redeemed what happened to him and that I'm going to turn to first Peter chapter 1 again just two verses first Peter 1 18 through 19 we'll put it on the screen as well it says knowing that you're not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers but with the precious blood as of the lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. I've already mentioned a couple times we're heading into the Lenten season. At the end of Lenten season, of course, we know it is Easter time where the church remembers the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And we look at that redeeming blood, the fact that the perfect lamb was sacrificed on our behalf. And because of that, we know our redemption, that's the point of this passage, our redemption is not based in physical things. I can't buy your redemption, you can't buy my redemption because those are all perishable things. They're gold and they're silver, they're how big your bank account is, how hard you worked. But we, are redeemed with non-perishable things. That is the blood of Jesus Christ himself. 
If this is a foreign concept to you or you would like to discuss that more, I would love to hear about it. Put it in the comments below. I will pray for you and your walk. And this Lenten season, let's try to focus a little bit on that non-perishable stuff so that we can walk more closely in spirit and in truth like John called us to do. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you next week. God bless.